Hello podcasters! Today we are going to look at the brand new wireless Bluetooth microphone from Mackie, the Onyx Go, which promises to be able to record phone calls while live EQing your voice and create automatic transcripts of whatever you record with it. Actually, I'm curious, let me make a quick phone call. Hi Barbie! Hi, should I answer with hi Ken now? Oh, please don't. I just need to quickly test here something. What is it that you're testing? It is a Bluetooth wireless microphone from Mackie called the Onyx Go. Did you guys see this? When I was talking, the waveform went to the left, and when Barbie was talking, it went to the right. <laughs> Do you know what it means? It means that not only can it record a phone call, but it records it practically in multi track, which is impressive. Spoiler alert! This is one of the cheapest and easiest options currently on the market to record phone calls in kind of multi-track. So let's have a look at how it works. And I will also do some sound comparisons when recording it to an iPhone, an Android device and against the Rode Wireless Go 2. And I will have a bonus use case for it towards the end of this video. Actually two. So let's get it cracking. First of all, this thing is tiny. So much so that I would even call it cute. On the device, You'll find a USB-C port for charging, the microphone grill, and the 3.5mm port, which is a TRRS port, so it can serve as a headphone output for monitoring, but also as an input for external microphones with a 3.5mm connection. Beside that is a status indicator, which is rather hard to see, but it's very useful. On the back, there's a quite sturdy clip to fix it to clothes or anything that fits it. The only button and the only color is on the side. This is a multifunctional button that does different things based on the situation. It is a rather nice design. A rectangle with rounded off edges, a rather pleasant color scheme going on with a matte black, bright red combo. I also like the implementation of the subtle Running Man logo and the device name, obvious but not overly pushy. You surely won't have to stick duct tape over it. As for the technical side, We've seen wireless mics already on the market, like the Rode Wireless Go and the Wireless Go 2, the DD Pocket Wireless, and cheaper ones from Comica, Cinco, and Boya, now new entry from DJI, just a few days ago the Joby Vevo Air, and some others. By the way, here it is side by side with the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now, make no mistake, these mics are not in the same league, which is by the way also reflected in their prices. What these other wireless mics have in common that they use a 2.4 GHz radio signal whereas this one uses Bluetooth. Okay, technically Bluetooth also uses the 2.4 GHz radio signal, it's just a different protocol, which has certain advantages, but also disadvantages. The clear advantage of the Mackie Onyx Go is that you don't need two pieces of equipment to record, a transmitter and a receiver, because in this case, your phone itself is the receiver. Consequently, you also don't need to fiddle around with plugging in the wire of the receiver into wherever you are recording to, as there is no extra receiver. I'll come back to it where it comes really handy. The obvious downside of it, however, is that you are stuck with recording to your phone. But at least you can record phone calls, which you cannot do with the other wireless mics I've just mentioned. It's a question of opinion whether or not it's a disadvantage. Let's just say it's a limitation by design. It was meant for recording on your phone. Also, the range is shorter, about 10 meters, whereas up to 200 meters in ideal conditions with the other wireless mics. It comes in a neat small box, which is not so difficult to open. It has the mic in it. What a shocker, as Badger from Podcast Stage normally says. You also get earbuds for monitoring and a Vinma for recording in a windy environment. Some instructions, which are not useful at all, so don't bother looking at it. Consider this if you buy extension as a user guide. You probably also get a charging cable, but it wasn't in my sample box. It charges with a standard USB-C, by the way. Before taking it into use, you better charge it. The small LED indicates the status of the charging, which will come up once you have plugged it in for charging. If it's red, it needs charging. If it's green, it's charged. Long press the red button on the side to switch it on and put it into Bluetooth pairing mode. If you did it right, the small LED flashes blue and once connected it will slowly blink blue. The battery will last you about 6 hours, which should be enough for most recording sessions, provided that you bring it charged. Charging time should be around 2 hours, which is also quite long. Once paired to your phone, you will have to download the Onyx Go app, 
which is available on both iOS and Android. This is really important. This mic only works with the app. No app, no recording. Now, of course, you can use it with any other recording app on your phone that you can imagine as a Bluetooth microphone, but it's the app that gives you all the features that you would buy this microphone for in the first place. If you did everything right so far, then it's a walk in the park. Open the app, it automatically recognizes the mic and you're ready to rock and roll. The app is where all the magic happens, so let's have a look at how to make the best use of it. On the top right, you have the three dots. This gives you the version infos and should you have any firmware updates, they will pop up here and you can install them right away. <laughs> as you can tell from the firmware, there are probably some firmware updates to be expected as it did not even reach version 1.0 just yet. In the middle, the green dot beside the Onyx Go name indicate that the mic is connected. It's a little redundant info as you won't even land on the screen unless you are connected, but hey, it's reassuring. Also, it does turn red while recording. On the top left, beneath the hamburger menu, You'll find all your recordings grouped into my files, whether they are audio recordings or video recordings, and then all your core recordings. Pressing edit allows you to batch delete files, but you can also swipe to the left to share or delete them. Below that you can find a record indicator. Once you are recording, the waveforms will pop up here. The little cogwheel lets you select the recording file format. This will be really important when we get to exploring how to record phone calls. It also lets you choose the behavior of the LED indicator and what happens if you double click button. <laughs> I assume it's the real red button as it is the only button on the device, so it's safe to say I'm right. You can shift the pitch of your voice if you're inclined to do so for whatever reason. And the next one is really my favorite. You can set it to auto record phone call. So once connected, it will switch on recording for any incoming or outgoing phone call. Voice prompts are scary. <laughs> switch them off, although they might be useful, I guess it will tell you if they lost connection or if the battery is about to die. Also, these sudden prompts will make it into recording, which is not very nice of them. As the unit can mix in any music that you are playing on the phone, you may as well use it as a karaoke machine, in which case you can just snap the fingers and it will remove the vocal tracks from the track you are playing so that you can sing along. However, we're not here for the gimmicks, but for the serious stuff. So let's have a look at what hides behind a mixer fader icon. First of all, notice that right above the record button, there are three even smaller icons. From left to right, a microphone icon, a chip alike icon, and a headphone icon. Whichever screen is active, the corresponding icon lights up in Mackey green. What else? Right now we are in the middle, so let's see what we have here. First, it tells us that we are in the fine tuning setting pane of mic one, which lets us assume that more than one Onyx Go mice can be controlled by the app. How many at the same time, we don't know. The first setting is the music volume. It's one of the headline features of the device is that you can mix into recording any music played on the phone as long as you turn on the mix switch. Now, to be clear, that is the same phone you are recording your voice with, which is actually quite unique. Voice removal relates to the karaoke gimmick. It's funny, but I can't demonstrate it on YouTube to avoid copyright claims. But it does a fairly good job at removing vocals from any track you are throwing at it, i.e. from Spotify, and you can sing along and record it. It does affect the music quality quite a bit, but for this purpose, nothing to worry about tremendously. Mic volume sets the sensitivity of the microphone, which I found very quiet, so I normally cranked it up all the way to 100%. And this is how you are hearing the audio samples from the Mackie Onyx Go during this video as well. The monitor switch lets you select if you want to direct monitor yourself through headphones, for which you have a TRRS headphone port on the device. Since this is a TRRS plug, it means that you can actually plug in another microphone there, like a camera microphone. But I'd make sure it's one that has a headphone port to still be able to monitor yourself. Or a speaker headset like old AirPods, then it's all solved. Internal mic, external mic, if you choose to plug in another mic, you can select which one you want to use, the built-in one behind the grill, or the one you've plugged in. So the Rode Video Micro apparently didn't work with the Onyx Go mic. Uh, by the way, it didn't work via TRS or TRRS connection either. And probably the reason for it is that the Onyx Go doesn't have the sufficient power to power this microphone. So if you have a 3.5 millimeter microphone, that has its own power, it has its own battery, that would probably work. But I just couldn't switch on the external microphone option in the app. 
Noise reduction does what it says. It has three levels, of which level two is already quite aggressive, so I always stick with level one if applied at all. You can also add reverb in case you are using the karaoke function or trying to record an instrument with it. Then finally there are the voice changer buttons, which apply a masking effect on your voice, should you be into such things. And while it's absolutely not impressive what I'm hearing in my headphones, and that's also the case even if you plug in some quality studio monitoring ones, it's actually scary, but it does not necessarily mean that the recording will not be of impeccable quality. So let's check the feature that is the most interesting for podcasting, phone call recording. First, set the recording format to MP3 or AAC. This is really important. So let me repeat, do not set the file format to WAV but set it to MP3 or ACC instead. The reason for it is that while in the WAV format it records a summed mono file of whatever is captured by the device, in MP3 or AAC format it pushes the two sides of the phone call to the left and the right, which you can then easily separate in post. So again, MP3 or AAC are the formats if you want to record a phone call that you can edit in a meaningful way in post. So let me call Barbie again to show you some features. Hi again. I'm still testing the new Mac Onyx Go microphone. This time I have set it to AAC format instead of MP3. Can you hear me all right? Sure, it's clear. It sounds great. Okay, that's awesome. So, swiping to the left, I can actually modify my voice. I can EQ it a little bit. Look, now I have a much deeper voice. And now I have a much, much clearer voice. I don't know if you can hear it. Now I sound like a whale. And now I sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite impressive, actually. Funny. Hopefully you can't, can't do the same with my voice. <laughs> no, I can't. As you could see, since you were hearing the audio from the Mac Onyx Go's recording, it could capture the phone call with ease. The quality is actually okay. Of course, not comparable with a mail-out microphone's recording or that of a paid service, but it's definitely usable and tweakable further in post, but as I was showing you, also live using the 5-band EQ. As you could see from the waveforms on the display as well, when I spoke, it went to left, when the guest, then it went to the right. You will just need to take the file, transfer it to, say, Audacity, click on audio track and select the split stereo to mono, and there you have your two separate mono channels with the two voices separated onto their own channel. Now that's quite cool and it actually makes this device the cheapest and easiest option on the market to record a phone call in multitrack. Another thing that's really unique is that you can actually make a transcript of the conversation using the app. And that not only in English, <laughs> but in an impressive number of languages. I'm still testing the new Mac Onyx Go microphone. This time I have set it to AAC format instead of MP3. You can also easily edit the transcript right on the screen. So all good this far, but how about the competition? Well, we'll just see about that. So talking about the wireless microphone, the obvious competition of the Mac Onyx Go is of course all the other Bluetooth headphones or earbuds that you can imagine. For voice recording that is. They obviously can't help you record a phone call in multitrack. Okay, this is also not exactly multi-track, but let's say multi-trackable. <laughs> so let's test it. Oh, and after the test, I will also give you some use cases and an extra tip that may surprise you. So stick around for that. Okay, so to set the baseline, this is how the Mackie Onyx Go sounds when recording through it into an iPhone using the Onyx Go app. And this is how it sounds when I'm using the Apple AirPods recording into the stock voice recorder app on the iPhone. Third, I want you to hear what a higher end but still consumer level speaker headphone sounds. This is the Bose QuietComfort 35 II, also recorded to the voice recorder app. Now we are back on the Mackie Onyx Go recording into the Onyx Go app on an iPhone. And for the sake of variety, let's check all this on an Android device as well. This is how the Mackie Onyx Go sounds when recorded through the Onyx Go app on an Android device.
And here's how the Rode Wireless Go 2 sounds recorded into the Rode Reporter app. And as for comparison, this is how the Mackie Onyx Go sounds when recording through it into an iPhone using the Onyx Go app. As for my overall take on the device, would I recommend it? And to whom? It's a bit tricky. For the price of 120 euros, if you are someone who can conduct a phone interview for your podcast anytime the inspiration hits you, this is an absolutely must-have device as an EDC, which stands for Everyday Carry, as I recently learned. There's no smaller and lighter option on the market today that I would know of that can record a phone call where you can separate the caller's voice and your voice into individual tracks in post, and then would create the transcript of your recording in 120 languages. One euro for one language. Nice. So if you are into TikTok and shorts and smartphone video creation, sure. And it is also good fun to use as a karaoke machine where you can record yourself singing to a famous track. But on the negative side, the sound quality for voice recording is average, nowhere near compared to i.e. the Rode Wireless Go 2, although certainly clearer than just using the AirPods. And you can EQ it to your liking, either in post or even on the fly, although it would then be baked into the recording. Also, it's half the price, so it wouldn't actually be fair to expect the same sound quality. The app is not the most user-friendly either, and in some cases it's even inconsistent in how it calls features, voice removal versus switch to original singer, the fact that voice prompts of a dying battery actually make it in the recording is so bad that it's kind of funny. But all this can easily be fixed in the software update. So let's see which road Mackie chooses. The road, road, I guess we can just call it road. Greetings to Tom Buck for the inspiration of the level of jokes I should plug into the videos. <laughs> So Rode does frequent software updates, or they can choose the Zoom Rode with practically no software updates. I hope they chose the Rode. Bluetooth is a rather neglected connection in the audio world. There are four devices I would be able to list that actually had built-in back and forth Bluetooth connections so far, which means that they can receive but also send audio over Bluetooth. The Rode Rodecaster Pro and the TaxCam Mixcast 4. Okay, the Zoom PodTrack P4 and the P8 with a dongle. And all the rest maybe only had Bluetooth input, like the Behringer Flow 8 or the Mackie Onyx series of audio mixers. But if you were to connect the Bluetooth input to, say, a mixer or an audio interface, you were pretty much out of luck. We'll look into that as well on this channel a little bit later. Also, I'm actually very surprised that it is not advertised for a very specific use case, and this would be my bonus tip number one, which is using it on a gimbal. Because if you are using something like the Rode Wireless Go 2, you will have the issue of rebalancing first, then the cable of the receiver would eventually block the movement of the gimbal, and here you don't have a receiver to block anything or bring anything out of balance. So if you are doing a lot of smartphone videos with a gimbal, you should consider this too. Bonus tip number two relates to the back of the device. If you look closely, there's a small script on the clip that says Power by Sabina Tech. A quick Google search reveals that Sabina Tech has a strikingly similar device on the assortment called the Audio Wow, and one with similar functionality, the Smart Mic Plus. Now, I don't have either of these devices, but I'm quite sure they do similar things, and the reason why I think is that the Audio Wow's accompanying app looks pretty much exactly the same as the Onyx Go app. They are currently even slightly cheaper, albeit they supposedly do not have the Onyx preamp circuitry, but I didn't have the chance to test the quality difference. So my second bonus tip is to actually install the Smart Mic Plus app as well to your phone, as the Onyx Go mic works with it perfectly, albeit not with the Audio Wow app, but since the Onyx Go app is exactly the same with different colors, it doesn't really matter. The Smart Mic Plus app, however, has one distinct advantage. It offers an auto-scrolling teleprompter function as well. So if you are into creating TikToks or YouTube shorts or video podcasts with your front-facing camera, but prefer to nail the wording just right the first time using a script, this is your thing. That was it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like and subscribe so that I can see you next time on the channel.